the I am statements of Christ. And Pastor Andy shared Jesus' statement, I am the vine, abide in me. He shared the importance of abiding or staying connected to the vine, which of course is Jesus. But today, I would like to focus on what we need to do while we stay connected to the vine, Christ. We need to produce fruit. We not only need to produce fruit, we need to produce an overflowing abundance of fruit. Today's scripture is part of Jesus' last words to his disciples before his crucifixion. They had just left the upper room and where they shared their last meal together before that a very significant time, and they were walking through the Garden of Gethsemane before Jesus asked them to stop and pray with him. On the way, they walked through a vineyard, and Jesus gave them yet another perfect object lesson he wanted them to remember. In our scripture this morning from John chapter 15, in verses 7 and 8, Jesus promised but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruits, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Jesus chose to use a grapevine as one of his final messages to them and to us. Christ is the vine, and God is the gardener who cares for the branches to make them fruitful. The branchers are all of those who claim to be followers of Christ. The fruitful branches are true believers who, by living in union with Christ, produce much fruit. But those who become unproductive, those who turn back from following Christ after making a superficial commitment will be separated from the vine. Unproductive followers are as good as dead and will be cut off and tossed aside. So Jesus makes a distinction between two kinds of pruning, separating and cutting back branches. Fruitful branches are cut back to promote growth. In other words, God must sometimes discipline us to strengthen our character and our faith. But branches that don't bear fruit are cut off from the trunk because not only are they worthless, they often infect the rest of the tree. People who won't bear fruit for God or who will try to block the efforts of God's followers will be cut off from his life-giving power. Fruit is not limited to soul winning. In this chapter, answered prayer, joy, and love are mentioned as fruit. But Jesus says he's the true vine, which means as the branches, we can experience complete confidence and security in him. It's important for us to realize and to remember that no plant produces fruit instantly. That's the way it is for Christians as we grow in our faith. Pruning also means cleansing. Once the fruit's on the vine, the vine dresser cleanses the fruit of bugs and diseases. When we repent, Jesus cleanses us of sin. In order to produce more fruit, we must abide or dwell in Christ, and we do that by obeying him. The believer who lovingly obeys the word of God produces much fruit. Apart from the vine, Jesus we cannot accomplish anything of permanent spiritual value. To stay connected to the vine, we must obey. Jesus is asking us to bear fruit, fruit that will last. 
John Vandeleer reminds us that Jesus is telling us fruitfulness is not something as much as what we do as something we are. A tree does not have to strive to be fruitful. It's healthy if it's healthy and connected to a source of water and nutrients. If we remain in Jesus, just like the vine, we will bear fruits. Our values, our priorities, our desires, and our dreams will line up with those of God's. We will love God and people, and we will be concerned for the well-being of others. We will find compassion flowing freely because that is the heart of Christ. We bear much fruit when we remain connected to the vine, Christ, again, through prayer, worship, study, fellowship, and service. If not, we are like the dead branches which are cut off and used. Being connected to the vine is important not only as individuals, but also as the church. Christ is the vine and we are the branches. If we stay connected to him as the body of Christ, the body of believers of God, and dwell in him, and make our home in the heart of God, then we will grow and flourish as the church and bear much fruit for God's kingdom. If we're not producing an abundance of fruit, we need to see if we're abiding in the wrong thing. Our careers, our families, our desires, our ambitions, anxieties, or fears are come. The amount of money or possessions that we have Where is the dead wood in our lives, in our fellowship, and in our witness? If we don't presence of Christ and develop a deeper relationship with him. The encouraging news, though, is that if our relationship gets broken with God's grace, we can be grafted back and healed. In other words, when we stray from God, all we have to do is ask for forgiveness, and he will welcome us back with open arms. And even something that is grafted back can be very productive. Many years ago, my husband took a cutting off one of his dad's uh, apple trees, and he grafted it onto a crab tree, believe it or not, in the, our backyard. You wouldn't believe how many delicious apples we got from that tree for many years. And one morning, as I was lying in bed, I could hear the branches cracking. And my husband had to go and prop them up so that they wouldn't break off. That tree was bearing much fruit. If we start producing so much fruit, we feel as though we are at a breaking point and we can't go on, Jesus will hold us up. So even if our relationship with Christ gets broken by his grace, we can be grafted back, healed, and produce much fruit for him. It's much like a sheep straying away from the herd and maybe even getting stuck in a thorn bush. But the shepherd goes and looks until he can find him and helps him to get unstuck and carries him back lovingly in his arms. God uh, 
welcome us back into his arms. Unlike a tree graft, however, we must want God. Not our own efforts, but only by being connected to Christ and allowing him to work through us. In the wonderful spirit-filled life, Charles Stanley writes, Christ expected his followers then and now to bear fruit. Notice he did not expect them to produce fruit, just bear it. And not just some fruit, but much fruit. The second thing that is clear from these verses is that what Jesus calls us to do is impossible. It's not merely difficult. It's not simply a struggle, and it's not simply just hard. It's impossible. Jesus said, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Not a little, not a few things, nothing. And this should come as good news. No one can live a Christian life apart from Christ, at least not with the consistency necessary to accomplish what Jesus has asked us to accomplish. What fruit do you see in your life? Are people drawn to Christ through you? Do you encourage others in their Christian walk? Do you see more fruit in your own life as you follow Christ year after year? The key to producing fruit is growing closer to Jesus, knowing him more accurately, loving him more, and obeying him in more detail and with more joy. If that sounds too complicated or deep to you, let me give you some day-to-day -day examples. When you mow the grass for an elderly person, or take care of an ill friend or a neighbor, or serve behind the scenes at church or at work, or spend your lifetime as a missionary in the jungle, or serve as a soldier, you are producing fruit, which gives God glory. Bruce Wilkinson has written a wonderful little book entitled Secrets of the Vine, Breaking Through to Abundance. Some of you in my Bible study might remember that we went through that study several years ago. There's also a companion devotional that goes along with it that I'm rereading again and finding very helpful. Wilkinson, who's the founder and president of Walk Through the Bible Ministries, writes the three secrets of bearing fruit, and they are as follows. First, if your life consistently bears no fruit, God will intervene to discipline you. Second, if your life bears some fruit, God will intervene to prune you. And third, if your life bears a lot of fruit, God will invite you to abide more deeply with him. Wilkinson describes the amount of fruit we produce with four baskets. Basket one, no fruit. Basket two, fruit. Basket three, more fruit. And basket four, much fruit. He writes that he has asked audiences all over the world how they would describe the level of fruit bearing among Christians today. And that was several years ago, but I think today it might be worse. Their responses were consistent. They concluded that nearly half of all Christians bear little or no fruit. Another third bear some fruit, and only 5% bear a lot. That's a little discouraging, isn't it? Wilkinson's first secret of the vine is, if your life consistently bears no fruit, God will intervene to discipline you. He does that to get our attention and then 
nudges us lovingly, wisely, and persistently toward the life and character you desire, but you can't reach without help. He can make himself heard in many ways. Maybe it's a prick of your conscience or a timely word from another person, a scripture, a sermon, or a conviction by the Holy Spirit. We may feel this discipline in various ways, emotional anxiety, frustration, distress, pressures increasing at work or at home, maybe in your health or your finances, or decreased joy in things that used to give you pleasure. C.S. Lewis said that God whispers through pleasure but shouts through our pain. Wilkinson says the second secret of the vine is if your life bears some fruits, God will intervene to prune you. He will cut away immature commitment and lesser priorities to make room for even greater abundance for his glory. God asks you to let go of things that keep you from his kingdom purposes and your ultimate good. Wilkinson writes, the most fruitful and the most joy-filled Christians are the most pruned Christians. What God asks of you now may seem difficult, but the results, if you say yes to the vine dresser, will be dramatically more than you could have imagined. You will know that God has a unique and important destiny for you, and you will want it with all your heart. God isn't trying to just take away. He's faithfully at work to make room to add strength, productivity, and spiritual power in your life. His goal is to bring you closer to the perfect and complete image of Christ. This pruning will help you to bear more fruit. As as we stay connected to him, we become more and more like Christ. The third secret of the vine is if your life bears a lot of fruits, God will invite you to abide more deeply with him. Not for him, but to be more with him. If you stay connected to him, if you draw spiritual nourishment to him, from him, if you allow the power that flows through him to flow through you, nothing will hold you back from reaching the most abundant life possible. God will use you no matter what season you are in. It is never too late to begin bearing fruit. Today we heard in verse 11, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I've just given you Wilkinson's three secrets of the vine, but there's so much more in this little book. It would only take you about an hour to read all of it. And I recommend it to help you understand how God wants you to be all he has created you to be. Let me leave you with these thoughts to ponder. Are you producing more fruit each year? Do others see Christ in you and through you? When we bear much fruit, God is glorified. As the branch draws life from the vine, so we draw life from Christ. And to abide in Christ is to draw upon his life. So think about what fruit you are bearing. Is it little or maybe more? Or will it become much fruit. 
do you encourage others in their walk with Christ? Sometimes it takes a lot of courage to do that. But let's all work at producing more fruit. One of my study Bibles describes loving God like this. Love is such an easy word to say and such a hard thing to do. Ultimately, love shows itself not by declarations of affection, but by the service we render to the ones we profess to love, especially service that inconveniences us, that calls for sacrifice. What is true in expressions of human love is equally true of our love for God. Jesus put the matter quite simply. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. And in light of today's scripture, which is a chapter that follows this in the book of John, if we love God, we will stay connected to him and bear much fruit. And so my prayer is that we will all leave here today knowing in our heart of hearts that we are never alone. As we stay connected to the vine, Jesus, the power of God flows within us and then through us and outside of us in loving service to him and to others. It's not about your intentions. It's not about how hard you try. It's how much fruit comes from your branch. May your harvest overflow. Amen.